Today, we've got Roland's RP107. This is Roland's entry-level digital 88-note piano with lots to offer when it comes to speaker detail. Love the action. We're also gonna listen to the Supernatural piano sound, very similar to what they've got now on the GP3. Let's get started with this right away. The space that RP107 is fighting for in the marketplace is a crowded one. There are many, many options in that sub-1500 US dollar range for an entry-level console piano. You've got the KDP75 and the KDP120 from Kauai. You've got uh, the Yamaha Arius YDP 145, 165 kind of flirting around that price range. And now with Roland, we've got the RP 107, which replaced the RP 102. And so where exactly does this fit in? Let's first start with the basics. The RP 107 uses the new BMC chip uh, and that uh, is driving an updated Supernatural piano engine. So this is gonna be a very similar uh, piano tone experience to what you might get out of say the FP30X or even the brand new Roland uh, GP3 digital grand piano. Now we've got this line out uh, plugged in out of the headphone jack because there's no discrete audio uh, jacks out. So I'm gonna put the headphones on and do just a little bit of playing so you can get a sense of what the piano sound is on this RP107. I find this generally with the Supernatural engine, not necessarily getting into the modeling because some of this changes, but in the sample-based Supernatural engine, you have this really fat attack um, right across the range anytime you're in sort of the forte and up range. And that's one of the most characteristic um, elements, I guess, of the Roland sound. I think this works incredibly well for a lot of contemporary playing. I think this works super well as well for jazz because it gives you that, that punch, that energy behind the note. Um, sometimes that, that type of attack starts to feel overbearing uh, depending on the type of classical music that you might be playing, um, but only once you get up into a really particularly high uh, range. Because on the other hand, sometimes the lack of aggressiveness you can get out of some of those other instruments I mentioned can be a little frustrating depending on, again, the type of music that you uh, are wanting to play. So Roland definitely giving you something different than any of the other brands uh, in this price range in terms of the piano sound. Let's also now talk about the action, because key action is really important, especially for people who are uh, just starting out. And chances are, if you're looking at this or any of the, those other models I mentioned, you probably are at the beginning of your journey. This is, is likely like your first uh, console digital piano, possibly the first one with 88 notes uh, and weighted notes. So action, super important for you 
uh, if, if you fall into that category. Action and finding one that really connects with you is going to be a really big part of how connected you feel with the instrument, but it also uh, leads directly to good development of technique um, and muscle tone, uh, which is important because if you transition then from this up to an acoustic, having a digital which is going to um, ease that transition the best as possible I think is a really big benefit. And in this regard, uh, I think this is where the RP107 holds its own and possibly leads the pack. This has the PHA4 action in it. And the PHA4 action is definitely a professional grade action. This action is going into instruments such as the Phantom 08. It's going into instruments like uh, the RD88. It's even in instruments such as their GP3 uh, digital baby grand that was released uh, not too long ago. Really widely used across the Roland range. It has a triple sensor, basically it's going to detect the motion of the key uh, really quite well um, as it sends that information off to either a computer or the internal tone generator. It also has escapement or let off, which means that about two thirds of the way down the key you can actually feel a little hiccup. And I've, you know, I, I make mention of this a lot. That little hiccup for me um, provides just a tiny bit of resistance um, that you really only feel when you're playing kind of in the lower dynamic ranges. Uh, and that resistance adds just a touch more control, in my opinion. For me anyway, for sure, uh, it adds that control and a little bit more realism when you're uh, moving back and forth between this and an acoustic piano. When it comes to the action, I think the weighting of the key is also very similar uh, to what you're gonna find on a larger upright or a small, well-lubricated baby grand, slightly on the heavier side. So it's got a great sense of depth, it's got a great sense of inertia behind it, which I think is good for training your fingers uh, and really lets you be expressive over a, a big, wide dynamic range. And then it's it's got nice, accurate output. The specs on these speakers aren't very impressive. I think they say that they're eight watts aside, which, you know, if we're just going off, off the ink on this, um, means that this shouldn't sound much better than, say, a slab, a basic, you know, portable instrument for, you know, $1,000 or something like that. However, the way that they have uh, done the speaker boxes inside here, and also that the way they've designed the uh, key cover, is actually uh, linked to how you're hearing the sound because they leave this very intentional gap right over top of the key cover where you're getting quite a bit of tone coming out the front, a lot of detail, and they've left distance between um, the top of the keyboard and the back of the speaker. So you're getting some very directed uh, treble that's coming through here. So unlike most of the other instruments in this price range that have um, more powerful but exclusively down facing speakers with really no tone porting out the front. Um, this is taking advantage of a more efficient design where even though you are getting a little less bass um, and you really do notice it, it's just, it's, it, um, it's not that it feels like it's lacking projection, but there's just that, that lower warmth that you don't quite get like you get on, say, the Kawhis of this range. Um, but there's way more detail that you're getting out of the speakers. So the experience of playing this with headphones and the experience of playing it uh, without headphones is actually a lot closer uh, than what you get on some of the, uh, the other models that we've mentioned earlier in this review. And you've heard the line out, now we're gonna actually listen to the speakers so you can get a sense of that. So here is the RP107 through its speakers being picked up by two stereo microphones directly over top of my head.
this comes with the stand and the triple pedal and a bench included. Uh, so in that regard, it is a very similar offering to what the others. The interface on this, very simple. It's not loaded up with a ton of sounds. So uh, to me, this reminds me a lot of what you would get, say, out of uh, like one of the Kawaii KDP-75s or even one of the original ES series. I think there's 15 tones on here. So it's going to give you some E-pianos, a few strings, the ability to, you know, layer two those sounds on top of one another. Some basic but still engaging fun stuff. It's only available in this black. You can't get it in any other color. Comes with the music stand, as you can see. It's also got these little twigs here that help to uh, keep some of the thinner music, uh, sheet music, uh, in place. This has uh, Bluetooth MIDI and Bluetooth audio. You can connect it uh, to the Roland Piano app, as I think we've mentioned a little earlier, and that gives you the ability to kind of remote control uh, the various settings as well as access all of the lesson programming in here because there's over 300 songs preloaded. Uh, most of those are in the form of play along repertoire uh, from some of the most popular method books that are out there. So to wrap up this look at the RP-107, here's where I think it has a place. First of all, you need to like the Roland Piano Tone, just like if you're buying a Yamaha, you gotta like the Yamaha Piano Tone or the Kwai or the Casio or the Korg or whatever it is. Um, so that is, uh, I think, the first thing that you need to fall in love with before any of this other stuff matters. It's based off the Steinway D Concert Grand, and I know that there are a lot of people who do like the sound and the tone that Roland brings. When we get to the action, I think the action is an incredibly pianistic, properly weighted, very nuanced action uh, that you can get tons of mileage out of. Uh, definitely the first many years of playing, even if you're taking this at, at, a, at a very serious level, uh, this has lots of runway in which to develop your musculature, et cetera, et cetera. And then when it comes to the speaker performance, even though this is not going to give you this big, woofy, warm bass, the detail you get out of this console, even though they're relatively small speakers facing down, because of these front toe ports, is really impressive. I, I was extremely happy to hear the kind of uh, detail uh, and closeness that I was feeling uh, with this piano because that's not very usual. Uh, normally, if you want that kind of super precise detail, you've got to put headphones on, but I didn't feel the need with the RP-107. So all in all, I think the piano experience on the RP-107 is as good as the very best instruments in this category and it's bringing a slightly different tone uh, that, that some people may really enjoy more than some of the others. If you want to check out more piano videos, we've got hundreds, literally hundreds on the channel. We love making each and every one of them and we'd invite you to stay around, subscribe, become part of our community of piano lovers uh, and, uh, and watch a few more. My name is Stu Harrison. This has been Miriam Pianos on YouTube and we'll see you again soon.